Hello, friends, and welcome back to Enterprise Architecture. Now, last episode, we made a lot of progress in setting up our machines that you can see behind me from Thermal Expansion, or I guess Thermal Foundation was the old version of the mod, but point being, we have some amazing new machines for processing ores and creating our new ingredients that we need. So before we leap ahead in this pack into the next section of getting crystals unlocked, I think we're going to focus today on really doing some expanding of using those machines so that we can get our ore processing a little higher. So we can get to basically twice as much ore or even more production than we are doing today. So today is upgrade day. With no further ado, let's dive right in. So I did a little mining off camera for the preparation of this event. So I set up a second lava generator here and I'm pumping that lava into our system and added another one of these magmatic dynamos. Actually, I added uh, eight more of these magmatic dynamos. And that's all getting into our wire system here that I've started to set up. So this is going to provide the power for most of our experiments here. I also went ahead and put in a little aluminum floor here so I'd stop falling in this puddle of water where our water wheels are below. So what we're gonna do is take our various ores here and set up a couple of new simple storage networks. I think I can get away with just one, but I might need two. And what we are gonna do here is we are going to tell it first and foremost that these new containers here that we've set up, those are gonna be all connected to a single network. So we are gonna connect our inventories into the network here. So I think we'll just go over the top with these just for simplicity's sake. And, you know, we could do this more efficiently if we wanted by just using oak trim between these and making it a single storage drawers network first. But I think this will be fine. I don't think we're going to have any lag problems or anything from this. So we take our cables and we connect these up like this. And now the various raw ores that are coming out of the system, it now knows about. It's aware of these ores. So they are linked into the system. All right, so I've run our cable all the way down to this end of the base. And I started pulling some of the wires up here and built myself a little platform so we can build a processing room here. So what I'm going to do is take my power, which I had previously had connected up here, and route it into this room instead. So let's go ahead and put a connector on either side, let's say, of this, like so. We grab up our hammer and we tell it that it is a through connection like that. And now what we can do is actually put down a relay here so that we can use the power all over the place. And let's do the same thing on the opposite side. We'll put our relay here. We're going to put a pair of through connectors on either side here. And then we're going to put another relay here and tell this that this is through as well. And you can see that brown square again. That's what let us know, lets us know that it is connected here through the actual block. Now we're gonna reconnect up all of our various machines that we had set up before. I disconnected that for the purposes of this exercise. There we go. And now let's connect this relay to that, that relay to this, and this relay to that. And then on the outside here, we just connect our feed through back to the other relay. So now we have a little tiny room here that is powered and has our network cable coming in. Great. So I've just booped those up a level just so we have a little bit more room to maneuver in here. Now, the real issue here is that I need these storage network items to be stored temporarily in this facility. And that's because the items that are being pulled from there actually can't be attached directly into a machine. This simple storage network won't actually connect directly to a pulverizer or whatnot. So instead, we need to pull items out of those inventories and export them into our system here. So we are gonna export all of the items out of that network directly into a storage array that we are gonna put over here. So let's grab our drawer controller that we made a little while ago. I should just bought it because <laughs> uh, I had it, I had it laying around. So we are then going to use our export cable to export our items directly into this array. So if I set this exporter to be always on, it should not need to whitelist anything. It should just work. We will need to give it a storage network root, which we will put here. And in theory, that's gonna start exporting into this system. 
Okay, so I was actually using the wrong cables. I didn't need link cables down there for the source. I need instead the import cables. So I put four import cables on each of those, and then I need the link cable on the drawer controller. That just magically starts working for us. So now all of these other drawers that I put down are being filled with the items that are being pulled out of those inventories. So this is now the actual storage location for those, and those basically will be a backup queue if these get full for any reason. So this is now where we're gonna pull from to do our processing. Now to actually process these, what we wanna do is take our pulverizer here and put it, I think, right on top or in front of the blocks. I'm kind of torn as to where I want to put these, but I think right here will be fine. And if I then tell it to pull from the back, let's go ahead and shift click that to clear it out. Thanks again to uh, the people who are leaving me these great tips about how to do things like that. I did not know that before playing Feed the Factory that you could shift click on the middle and clear out our inputs. There we go, that's gonna go in here. Now, this I wanna put into some sort of a temporary storage as well that then we can route into our system and continue to have this grow. So I think what we might do here is we can actually just put down a standard storage system here. We can just do chests or whatever. Now, the thing to note is that three different items are gonna come out of the pulverizer for each of these that we're making, each of the ores that we're processing. We're gonna get our gravel as a 20% chance. We are gonna get whatever the ore is as our primary, 100% chance. And then we have a 10% chance to get a secondary. And in this case, you can see that's going to be copper. So we need a way of dealing with all of that. The easiest way would be able to have individual storage drawers down here but I do want to put those into a storage system. So I'm going to pipe those back around into this system. So to do that, let's go ahead and make ourselves up a couple of just regular chests real quick. So let's grab our planks here and we will make up, yeah, let's do, let's do six to start. And if I put that down here as a chest, I can make it into a double chest like so and tell this to push its items out the bottom. So that's gonna dump into this double chest momentarily. There we go. So this chest is now getting those items. And you can see from the hover that, although I can't open it because it's got something on top of it, those items are indeed going in. Now I want to extract back from this system. So I'm gonna make myself another import cable and wire that back into this route. That I'm then going to use to create a second series of storage drawers that will then be used for all of those ingredients that are the pulverized versions of these. All right, it was getting a little claustrophobic here, so I rearranged this just a little bit for now, but we'll, we'll probably continue to expand this later. So this pulverizer, we're just gonna change here so that it's actually importing from the right and exporting on the left. So that should start sticking items into this chest. And those items will be nickel dust, it's gonna be copper dust, which I don't have any right now, and gravel. Now, we do need to wire this back up. We had forgotten to do that. So let's put a connector on top and connect with wires to this. Great, so that should start pushing our items into this chest. Now this chest, we then wire back up into our storage network with an import cable. So let's put one of those on the bottom and we're gonna run this right into the same system, the same storage network that we already have. So let's just pull that over here, just like this and like this. And now that's gonna dump into this drawer controller again. It's gonna use the same controller as it previously had. Okay, so there I've cleaned it up a little bit so it makes it easier to see what's going on. I have the pulverizers on top here. The chests are where we're getting our outputs. And it looks like we have a new one, Cinnabar, which I had not accounted for yet. We're gonna have to find a place to put that. So let's put a drawer here and we can put our Cinnabar in that and lock it. And now I have these other drawers where this is being output. So this is Oak Trim running underneath this array and this array. So it basically connects this drawer controller into a mini network here as if it were a cable. And so all of our outputs are coming off the back of those chests and then into this same storage drawer controller. Now all the wiring is kind of a spaghetti mess as a result, so everything is coming off the back of this and up and over, but it works fine for our purposes. And so the pulverizers are now powered and working fine. Now, 
our dusts need to be dealt with. And so for that, we're gonna put our pulverizers on top of the various storage drawers that we care about. So I don't think I actually wanna do copper first. I think I'm gonna pull off the copper one. And I think I actually wanna put this on top of instead our nickel first. That's the most important one for us. We're gonna to top that up. And so this is going to know that it needs to pull from the bottom. We're gonna clear that. And this is going to then output on the top. So let's go ahead and output like that. Great. Now this needs to output into a temporary storage location and then get sucked into this storage network. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing. We're gonna put a chest on top of this, just like this. And now our nickel is going in there. The chest then we will add our cabling to. Let's do the import cable. Can I put it on the back without running into that? No, it's gonna break that wire if I put it there. So I guess I'm gonna to have to put it on top and fall down. We'll just move everything over a little bit here. We'll put our wire connector on the back of our induction smelter and we'll put our wire coil there. And now we should have enough room that we can put the import cable in the back. Great. And let's connect those up, wonderful. And now this will be integrated into our network by running this cable over this way. And we're gonna have another import cable here as well because there'll be another double chest. And then we will do another network cable. Now that then can get pulled automatically into this system. And to do that, we just need to run it all the way down and into that cable there. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And so let's pull it over here. And this will probably get replaced with a link cable at some point as well. So now all of those nickel ingots are getting pulled out. As you can see, that number is going down. We're gonna go ahead and drop all of these other things in here that we want it to pull out. And that's gonna go into our system here where our main storage is. Perfect. So with only two storage networks, we have all of this automated. Now, let me go ahead and set up the rest of these induction smelters. We'll do this one, this one, and this one. And we need to make ourselves a few more chests and configure these. So let's do this. Oh, and if I had my, what is it, the red print handy, I could go ahead and do this quicker and in an automated fashion, but this will work for now. Okay, so this is now automated completely. So we can upgrade these machines here to keep up better with our ore production, but that's just gonna give us our infinite amounts of ores. Now, I think I'm gonna take some time between episodes to tear all of these belts out and do this for all of the ores that we're currently producing, and this will just become how we produce all of these items now. And with that reasonably well automated, it's now time to move on to crystals as promised. So for that, we need to make our crystal research book. Let's add that to our shopping list. And I think I already have everything that we need to make that because we had made our crystal base in the last episode and I had some advanced techium that I made as well. So with that in hand, we can now submit this book and we have access to crystal fragments the same way that we do with everything else under ores are us. So let's go ahead and disable lead and disable silver and gold, and we are going to enable crystal. So for that, we're gonna need some more of our light gray colored stone. And you know what? We probably need to make up a bunch more of it. I don't know if that's gonna be enough. So let's take our smooth stone and cook that up, but we will go ahead and plunk this down and see how much we get out of it with our prospector's pick. So let's take this to mine it and yeah we got a decent amount of crystal fragments there is it enough i think we might be just like one short or a few short but it's pretty close and with that we then take our regular stone also which we need to cook up a bunch more of and use that to then make our crystal or the same way we do with all of our others. So let's go ahead and grab up our tech box for that and pick up the rest of our smooth stone here, or just, I said, sorry, regular stone. And that we just wrap in crystal fragments here. And that's how we make crystal ore. And again, 36 is the magic number. There we go. There's 36 of it. And that now is enough for us to set up a miner on top. So let's go ahead and check that off. And to get crystalline, we just need to now take our crystal ore and put it in a pulverizer. But let's go ahead and set up our miner. So the miner, again, same basic recipe here. We take a wooden pickaxe and we then add these other things to it. The 
wood and logs, and that makes a miner for us. Now, the real question is, what tier do we need for this? We need tier six, okay. So I think we need to make a little bit more of our tier six support frames. And let's go ahead and grab that up here. And we are just gonna build that on right here on the side of our redstone and our lead that we've already set up with this other tier six frame. So that should be relatively easy for us, like so. And then we put our crystal blocks in place, same way as we have done every other time with every other ore. So another three by three by four cube here, like so. And then we put our miner on top per usual. And on top of that, of course, goes another one of our one by one oak drawers for storage. And we just wait a second. And there we go. Now we have crystal ore coming out. So we're going to wait for a little bit of this to accumulate. All right, so we grab about 32 of those crystal ore that we had, and we go ahead and put that in our induction smelt. Oh, into the pulverizer, sorry, not the induction smelter. So we put that in there, and those will crush down. And then the resulting crystalline, we should get the quest completion for, that we can pulverize into crystalline dust among other things. Or maybe that's the only thing we can do with it. So there's the first pass through the pulverizer. And now we put it through a second pass through the pulverizer. And that gives us our crystalline dust for this quest. And now we need to make these other three dusts. Ruby dust we make with our crystal base, crystalline dust, and redstone. Sapphire dust, I think, is the same, but with lapis dust that's been pulverized. And peridot, what is peridot made with? Prismarine dust. So that's why we need those prismarine shards that we had from earlier that I didn't know what to do with, the crystal base in water. So we will need to make a whole bunch more of our crystal base. And that means we're going to need to make a whole bunch more of our niter, which we will have to get by crushing things down again. So let me go do that. I will make a whole bunch more prismarine and then we will be ready to crystallize all of this. And there's our pulverizer getting our niter in slowly but surely. And so this just needs to get popped in the crystallizer with our liquefied glass. So throw that in there. And do we have any liquefied glass yet? No, we don't have any left over. So we need to melt a bunch down in our magma smelter or magma crucible, I should say. So let's go ahead and just put 16 in for now. And we are going to dump this off as soon as it fills up. Eight buckets, there we go. We put that into the crystallizer and this should slowly but surely get us our crystal base. All right, so we've got a little bit of prismarine made here. So I went ahead and pulverized that and a piece of lapis. So let's go ahead and make up our last couple of items here. So let's make the peridot first. Is that peridot? Is that right? Whatever the green one is. Yeah, peridot. Uh, we're then going to make the ruby dust real quick like this. And then the sapphire dust is the last one that we need to make here. Perfect. And there is all three of those quests done. And now all we have to do is actually smelt them into the right uh, actual gem. So we need to get our liquid glass back out, which I put down because I thought I was done with it, but I'm clearly not done with it. So let's put this into our crystallizer and then we're going to drop each of these in in turn. All right, and there is our sapphire and that with the Perdo and the ruby finish all of our quests for crystals. So let's just collect these up. Great. And now the last little thing here I'm going to do, I'm not going to make the elite technium, but I'm going to make everything else. Let's go ahead and get the electrum gear. So we've got that. We already made those for making our machines. Let's make up some lead sheet metal here and also an amethyst shard. The amethyst shard we make in the induction smelter with those three gems we already have. So let's pop those in. And while that's going, I made up some lead plates in our metal press using the lead that we have been making. That gives us our lead sheet metal. And then we just wait one more second. And there is our amethyst shard. So collect that and we collect that. Now, Elite Techium, this requires a whole lot of stuff. 
Um, we need a lot more Signalum. We need a lot more Advanced Tachyum, Electrum Gears, and Amethyst Shards. So I'm going to go ahead and let these machines run between episodes, and we will get back to completing this quest first thing next episode. But for now, that brings us to the end of this episode. So thanks again for watching Enterprise Architecture, and we'll see you back here next time. Bye, friends.